Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that you and your family are doing well today. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. And uh, I was not planning on doing a video today, but uh, this has been quite the week because um, God spoke to me on New Year's Day. And for the, those of you who have not seen the video that I did on that before you jump to conclusions, uh, please do go and watch my uh, video, The Prophetic Word for the New Year 2021. You'll understand. So uh, God spoke to me on uh, New Year's Day. And last night, uh, the night of January the 5th, Santa spoke to me. Santa emailed me. And uh, then just this morning, he called me. And I talked to Santa Claus. Um, so a few weeks ago, I did a video entitled, Santa Paul's and uh, a, a gentleman ended up watching my video on Santa and he emailed me and I tell you this is one of those emails that is just uh, I'm, I'm going to hang on to and uh, because it was tremendously encouraging and uh, I think it'll encourage you as well so uh, I spoke with quote unquote Santa this morning and um, with his permission I am going to read this to you. I received his permission, so uh, let me read this to you. He says, Hi Justin, I just wanted to give you some feedback on your Santa Paws video. Let me start off by saying I initially hated that video, not because it wasn't well done or accurate, but because it made me look at some long-held and cherished traditions. For about 15 minutes, I would not have been voted president of your fan club. After a while, I realized you were right on every point, and it is more important to be true to God than to hang on to cherished traditions that take away from giving God His due glory. This was especially hard for me because I used to make appearances as Santa Claus. In fact, my wife and I got married on December the 6, 2020, in a Santa Claus-themed wedding at our church. And let me pause here. He included a picture of his wedding, and I'll put that up here. You can see this is uh, this is Tim, and uh, his wife that I now know is named Brenda. Spoke with her this morning as well, and um, this was just a month or so ago. In fact, a month today ago, December the sixth, twenty twenty. And I put my Santa Paul's video. I don't have in front of me right now, but I put my Santa Paul's video up. Oh, maybe a, a week or so after that, uh, but it was after December six. So, uh, but this is this is Tim and Brenda in their wedding. So, um, anyway, back to his email. He said, uh, "My wife and I got married on December six, twenty twenty, in a Santa Claus themed wedding at our church. After watching your video and prayerfully considering considering your points, I decided to hang up my red suit for good." My wife and I, who were both widowed in our first marriages, had raised our children with Santa, and we let them know that we were sorry for the deception. Wow. They, um, he watched my video, he and his wife Brenda did, and they went to their children and apologized. He continues, When I notified some of the Santa groups to which I belong, that I would not be playing Santa anymore, I was met with a level of vitriol and hate that I had not thought possible. Many tried to tell me that what they thought God would think, rather than what sacred scripture actually tells us what God thinks, I believe is no match for the Bible says. You know, he's referring to that uh, sometimes you see pictures of Santa and the caption is, I believe. Uh, what a way to put that. I believe is no match for what the Bible says. And um, I, I spoke with Tim. I emailed him back last night. And and then Tim called me this morning and I spoke with him. And uh, I didn't even know this, but I, I, I guess you know, it makes sense. But there's uh, there's groups that you can belong to. A, like it's called the, and he told me what it was. And so I just Googled it. But it's the International Brotherhood of Real Bearded Santas. And so um, he told me that with some of these, with some of the good Santas, you know, the uh, the men that look the part, you know, the men, I guess, that are about the right age, you know, not 25, but they're older, at least middle-aged in, in years and big and maybe, you know, 
um, maybe just a, a, a little rotund, but who also have a, a real beard, a real white beard. You know, not the not the little cheap elastic ones that you can you know pull down but a sure enough real white beard and they look the part and uh, so if 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 you're one of those guys uh there's some real money to be made in being a santa claus and in fact tim told me that some of these guys make a hundred thousand dollars in just two months you know presumably november and december so uh but yeah i mean wow I, I'm just I, I I read that email with my mouth hanging open. I mean, I just could not I couldn't believe it. And uh, the email continues. Let me let me continue here. Uh, Tim continues. He says, "Then I sent your video to my pastor, who is the widowed father of six young children. I don't know this gentleman, but um, that's heartbreaking. But uh, ages five to seventeen, he watched it." and told me that he could not biblically refute a single point and that Santa would no longer be part of Christmas at his house either. That was all it took to cement my decision. Um, in speaking with Tim this morning, he told me that uh, that he had actually made appearances as Santa Claus at his pastor's house even. And so his pastor watched the video and, and he saw the reality, the biblical reality, and and uh, it had an impact on him as well. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Tim says, um, Not everyone agrees with my decision to hang up the Santa boots, but I know it is the right one for me. I need to be faithful to my God more than to my traditions. Uh, thank you for all that you do, even when it causes pain by challenging dearly held memories and traditions. I appreciate you and your ministry more than you know. May God bless you richly, warmest regards. Tim from Arizona, for privacy reasons, I won't give his, uh, his last name and city, but it's Tim who lives in Arizona and, um, and, his, and his wife. I, I spoke with them, both of them, this morning. And what a just uh, ter tremendous, tremendous encouragement. Um, Tim went on to tell me that he has a, a Pentecostal slash word faith kind of background and and several years ago, I think he said about five years ago, he came across some of my teaching, Clouds Without Water, John MacArthur, R.C. Sproul, and by God's grace, God used that truth to deliver him out of that deception. And um, he, so he's been watching, you know, some of my stuff and reading MacArthur and all these good guys, and and uh, been growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he even has some of my bumper stickers, uh, he told me, on his car, which says, you know, if you want to hear God speak to you, read your Bible. If you want to hear God speak to you audibly, read it out loud. Uh, so he, he was not unfamiliar with me, but uh, this was an area in his life that he had not just, just had not yet considered. And uh, when he first started watching my video, I think he was probably about ready to go out and yank the bumper sticker off of his truck or car or whatever. But um, But then... You know, once the emotions subside a little bit and, and the truth of God's word um, does its job, it, 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 it changes us. It, it brings us to, you know, it brings us to repentance. And, and so this is just tremendously encouraging to me. And uh, I hope that it is as you as, for you as, as well. You know, as Christians, as Christians, we can be in error. And um, and even significant error. Peter was in error. You know, he didn't want to take the gospel to the Gentiles, and he was playing the hypocrite. And Paul rebuked him to his face, and he he saw that he saw the truth, and he bent the knee to it, and he repented. And so um, the Corinthians were in horrific, horrific sin, and Paul wrote them a letter, several letters actually, but um, four. But at any rate, he. Um, at, at some point, they they bent the knee, wrote them the severe letter, and the the tearful letter, and uh, rebuked them that he sent by Titus, and and um, they were brought to repentance. They were convicted. That's that's the work of the Holy Spirit of God. That's what He does in our lives. We can be in error, but when shown the truth from God's Word, uh, we bend the knee to that truth. And so, uh, you know, salvation is free. Discipleship is not. 
discipleship costs us. Living for li- living our lives for Christ will cost us. And uh, friends, not to not to chase too much of a rabbit here, but as as time goes on, uh, I think we can all see this is you know things are not going to get better for us as Christians. They're not going to get they're not going to get easy, any easier. Uh, they're going to get worse, and so persecution's coming. Uh, but praise the Lord. I, I mean, this just made my day. It made my week, made my year, as young as this year is thus far. But uh, So I just wanted to share that with you, and I hope it encourages you uh, half as much as it did me. So uh, Tim, formerly, <laughs> formerly known as Santa, uh, thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing that that with me. May God bless you and your new bride, your new life together uh, very richly and be glorified in you. So, all right, dear ones, that's about it. Kind of a hastily thrown together video here. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all.